next thing is tithes and offerings. You know, we're not at church um, like we normally are in a building, uh, but we still are the church. And um, we can still give um, our tithes and our offerings. And we have this available either through mail. You can get the address on our website. We also have online giving through our website. And we also have text to give. And if you would like information on any of those, um, I will um, be happy to send those to you. Just send us a message. And with that, um, I'm going to say a prayer and then turn the morning over to Tracy. Dear God, we just thank you again for this time that we can gather. And God, I pray for Tracy as he brings the message that his words would just be from you uh, through him to our hearts. And it's in Jesus name I pray. Amen. All right. Thank you, Beth, so much. I appreciate it. So uh, this uh, this whole idea of staying at home and, uh, you know, the stay home order kind of thing has uh, really kind of rocked our world a little bit. Um, I, I just wanted to say a couple of things, and that is that um, for some of us, it's just really been hard to stay, stay in place and, and be home. But I read a hilarious statement this week and had to send it to my eldest son. It said this, social distancing. I was grounded for 80% of my childhood. I have trained for this. <laughs> I don't know if that's funny to you as it is to us in, in our life experience. For all of the extroverts out there, I do want to say this though. I have a phrase of comfort for you. This too shall pass. We shall not always be in this thing of social distancing forever, right? And uh, I do have something out there for you, you introverts. The whole time the extroverts are going stir crazy and, and, and all of that, you introverts are like, celebrate good times, come on, right? I mean, that's, that's kind of the way we're feeling it, uh, these, us introverts here in this, in this situation. The COVID-19 pandemic has brought us into unprecedented times. In an age of science and technology, we've come to realize that we're not in control. And for the most part, leaders in every aspect of life have had given us a serious but confident message that, that we can defeat this, that we can overcome. But the truth is, the mortality of human life on this earth is a reality. As a spiritual leader, I do not relish in the fear, the pain, the struggle, but I do have a message of hope. And it's not just that we'll overcome this virus, but that we will overcome death. Although we live in a broken world of our own doing, the creator God in his, is at work. Out of his love for the world, he sent his son Jesus to bring hope and healing to this life and the elimination of pain, sorrow, tears, separation, and death in the life to come. As we approach the Easter season, let the cross and the resurrection of Jesus be the lens through which we understand our human existence and God's love for us. I was just reading John 3.16 this morning, and it said, For God so loved the world, he sent his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. The cornerstone of our faith is God's love for us. It's also the secret sauce to navigating life in this time of quarantine or stay home order. In 1 Corinthians 14, one out of the message, I love this, this is what it says. Go after a life of love as if your life depends on it, because it does. You know, here at Discover Point, we use the hashtag live love to help us focus on our mission. You know, we follow Jesus and invite others to come along. Why? Because we have a passion for people that's fueled and ignited and actually has its origins in God's passion for people. For God so loved the world. Uh, while we may be in a season of social distancing, which by the way, Governor DeWine and Dr. Acton have defined as physical distancing, not social isolation. And so we've been teaching here at Discover Point this whole thing about staying connected. Uh, we have the technologies, um, you know, even we, we even have the old technology of even snail mail 
but you can you can video chat you can use your phone just make phone calls um, we've seen lots of different ways to do that here at discover point though we've we've, we've actually taken it uh, our own advice and so beth and i this week we had an opportunity it took us some while to get everybody because some of our family members still have flip phones right but it took us a little while to get everybody connected and we were able to get uh, my parents and all my siblings and spouses on a video chat and we actually did a bible study together we also got best family together same way and uh, but uh one day uh my daughter facetimed beth and our our oldest grandson took took the phone into the playroom and he and nana played all beth could see was the ceiling but they talked and, and communicated while they played jungle <laughs> it was awesome uh, uh, but we also were able to meet together in our life groups. Uh, we have we use Zoom, the uh, the platform Zoom, and uh, we were able to connect and pray and read scripture. Um, and and it was it was good to be together, even though it was virtual. So let us not lose sight of God's passion for people, even though. Uh, we're having to be more creative by the way we're not social discipline, di isolation, uh, but, but that we are continuing to connect. Because God's passion for us is what fuels our relationships, our relationship with him and our relationship with other people. I want to read out of 1 Corinthians again, chapter 13. Uh, I'm going to read the most part of the chapter, and I'm going to be using the New International Version. And this is what it says. Paul writes this, he says, if I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, wow, but do not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. I wanna repeat that because I believe it bears repeating. Uh, it's so powerful. But do not have love. I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. See, love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast. It is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no records of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but it rejoices with the truth. It always protects, it always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Jumping down to verse 13. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these, you know the answer, say it with me, love. I wanna make three observations and then, and then I'll kind of land on some application. The first observation is this, God is love. This passage, describes God's attitude and actions towards us. Let that sink in. Reread 1 Corinthians 13 verses 4 through 8 and let it powerfully settle on you the idea that this is God's attitude and his actions towards you. The second observation is God's love for us is unchanging. We are secure in his love. Think about that. These actions and these attitudes is always how God sees and interacts with us. It's not dependent on what we do or what we don't do. God's love for us is everlasting and is also unconditional. The third observation is this. Love is greater than both faith and hope. Let me say that again. Love is greater than both faith and hope. I, 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 I'm going to say a phrase that I don't want 
emails about because I, I'm not wanting to be associated with a book that was previously written. But love wins. It really does. Love wins because God's love for us, he has provided us a way for eternal life. But not just for after we die, but for now. God's love overcomes my lack of faith. You know, there's a story in the Bible where, where the guy says, you know, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. And I think that's, that's powerful to realize that, that God's love overcomes my doubts. But it also is greater than even hope. In this world, sometimes we, are, we hear people giving hope um, and have aspirations of hope that are not founded on truth or God's love. And so what I, I want to share here is that, that if, if it's not founded, if our hope's not founded on God's love, then it's empty hope. So love is greater than both hope and faith. Now, let me, let me, let me get down to some application. So what I want to say is our application is simply this. Imitate God in your attitude and your action towards others. Simply put, right? So let, let, me, let me give us a little exercise to do. This is your homework assignment. I know you're doing, I know you're doing a lot of homework. Some of you are homeschooling for the first time along with a little help from teachers on, on, online and videos. But let, let me give you some homework assignment for your spiritual homework. So let us, let us do it this way. As a household, whether it's a householder one or a plethora of people, as a household, go through 1 Corinthians 13, specifically verses 4 through 8, and list the attitudes and actions of love. Now remember, these are God's love towards you and God's actions and attitudes towards you. But list those out. Then everybody identify each other's strengths and celebrate those. Now be careful. You're going to be tempted to point out someone's weakness, and we'll get to that. But at this stage, part two here, celebrate where people are strong. Celebrate that. Encourage one another. Now, the third thing is personal, not as a group, but personally, identify at least one attitude and one action you believe God would want you to grow in, right? Now share that with everyone else in the house and see, get their feedback on that. Be kind to one another. Love is kind, right? Be patient. Love is patient, right? Pray for one another, though, that God would give wisdom to recognize situations for change. The Bible says that when we're tempted, God always provides a way of escape. And so that's kind of what we're asking for, God to open our eyes to his way of escape and his ways of righteousness, which are these attitudes and behaviors of love, right? So, so pray for wisdom. Also, pray for courage to face the changes that we need to make. I think oftentimes we don't change because we're afraid. We're afraid of failure. We're afraid of, of, of the hard work that it might take. And, and, and let, me, let me reassure you, God loves you whether you succeed in these changes or not. But as you imitate God in his attitudes and behaviors towards others, you will find yourself growing closer to him and that his love and of attitude and actions will begin to flow through you. Finally, Ask God to give you strength to choose change. I, I, think, I think that uh, when we try to do it on our own, out of our own power, we fail. Eventually we fail. And so, but if we're doing this in the power and in, uh, of the Holy Spirit, then God's power of the resurrection of Jesus can bring new life into these new attitudes and new actions of love. Let me, let me give you an invitation. If you would like to talk to me, start a conversation with me about your spiritual life, your relationship with God, 
um, whether it's whether you you know God or you know Jesus now, or maybe it's a conversation about who He is, or or maybe you already know Him, but but it's about a situation that you're dealing with these attitudes and actions. I invite you to start a conversation with me. It doesn't have to be me. Start a conversation with someone you know and trust to be a mature follower of Jesus. But please act if you need to have that conversation. You can, you can, you can just uh, make a comment here. Say, Tracy, contact me. You can give me, uh, we'll connect with private message and go from there. I'll make, let me close with prayer. Father, I thank you so much for your grace and your love. And I thank you for all that you do in our life because you are motivated by love. Lord, your love is patient. Your love is kind. God, your love doesn't envy or boast. It's not proud. God, it, it's honoring to others. God, you, you have no self-interest in your love for us other than your desire to be our Abba Father. God, you, you do not get angry easily. God, you're willing to, to put all of our sins as far from us as the East is from the West. God, your love never delights in, our, in, our, in, our, uh, in, in evil against us. But God, you're always our champion. You always rejoice as we walk in your light and in your truth. God, you are always willing and always do protect us. God, you even trust us. As, as imperfect as we are, God, you trust us. I am so grateful for that. that. God, that is so empowering. God, you always hope. God, you always persevere with us. Um, reminded of the story, Lord, of Meshach, Shagarach, and Abednego. God, not only did you deliver them, but you stood in the fiery furnace with them. God, your love never fails. Lord, may we become imitators of you. Hashtag live love. And it's in the authority of Jesus that we pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week. Hope to see you at Soul Care. Um, if you'd like to connect with us for prayer on Saturday morning, uh, just private message us. We'll, we'll connect you that way. And uh, we will have another great week and be back here next Sunday. God bless you as you prepare for the celebrate the resurrection of Jesus coming up here in a couple of weeks. Bye now. Mm -hmm.